Hey, AP Computer Science students, congratulations on reaching the end of the semester and your final project for the school year. I've decided that in these next two weeks, we're gonna complete a project uh, where you will create a console game uh, called Battleship. You're probably familiar with the game. And uh, I'm gonna show you that game running in a minute. Um, you see it uh, in front of you on the screen inside a program called CodeHS. CodeHS.com is a coding platform designed for high school kids to learn how to a program in Java. It's a great program. And I've set up a course for you, a section, and you all have premium access to that. And uh, look at the Moodle for the instructions. Okay. So what we can see here is on the left, the, uh, I'm going to show you, this is the actual, the end of the game here. And by the time you get done, you're going to have these classes. You're going to have uh, a location class, ship class, player class, grid class, and battleship class that you create. The randomizer.java file is going to be, be provided for you. Um, the very first class that you're going to write in the first lesson is the ship class. And I'm going to demonstrate here in a few minutes how to get started writing that class and just orient you to how this code HS platform works, how to test your code, how to see if you have errors, how to fix those errors, etc. But before we do that, I want to just show you the game running. I go ahead and over on the right hand side, I see a number of tabs and the first one's called the run code tab and click in there and you run the code. Okay. So again, it's a console app. It's not, it doesn't have a graphical user interface. Um, so there's going to be prompts and it's telling me to hit enter, uh, place a ship and I see a grid. Now, as soon as you see this, you should think 2D array, right? This is a two dimensional array. We know we have a grid class. So that's probably where that's going to be, um, replicated. And so we uh, have the grid with the letters down the side, the rows and, and the columns. Okay. So they're going to ask me uh, when you play this game and there, there is another video that you could see that shows you this game running, but it, they don't have a lot of explanation. So I wanted to, to provide more explanation. Um, there are like five ships that you get to place in battleship. And there's like one that's got a length of two and then two that have a length of three, etc. And so, uh, just like the game you've played before, hopefully, um, but there's different size ships. First of all, they ask you which row I'm going to put row B, which column I'll put uh, column two, and then they're going to ask you horizontal or vertical at which time you simply write out all or part of the word. I think you can even misspell it and it'll still work. And then it says to hit enter to place the next ship. When you do that on the next screen, it will show you the ship they just placed. And then they're going to ask you to put the next ship, which is a length three ship. So I'll go um, E and it can do lower or uppercase, doesn't matter. And we'll go six and we'll go vertical and it'll on uh, the next screen place that ship. All right. Now it is, there is some uh, error checking in here. For example, if I put my next ship uh, down on row J at the bottom and said uh, row uh, column five, but then I said I want it to be placed vertically down the screen, it's going to give me an error. It's going to say invalid ship placement because it would have gone off the edge of the screen or grid if I'd done that. So I have to do it again. So again, if I put J in there um, and put one and then say, uh, you know, horizontal, then uh, next ship, it'll allow me to do that. Okay. So I'm not going to go through the whole step process here, uh, but you can see how that needs to be done where you place all of your ships. I'm going to go forward here and then show you what happens next. All right. Once you're done placing all your ships, and again, there's five ships that you have to place and you can see I've now put them in here. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, then it's going to say hit enter for the enemy to choose their ship location. So you hit enter and now you can see where the enemy puts their ships. Now that seems like a weakness in the game. You wouldn't really want to know where the enemy has their ships um, because it makes it easy to win. But nonetheless, there is, uh, that is done automatically for you by the game, um, placing the, sh the enemy's ships on the, on the grid and then you can see it. All right, then hit enter to start guessing and it's my turn. And so I can start guessing. Now, I obviously saw where those ships were, so I might want to go like I two and, uh, that would have been a hit because I saw there was a ship there. 
And um, now you can see I've gotten one hit out of 17. So if you count all the different uh, spots together of all the ships, there's 17 locations on the grid that can contain a ship. And so I've gotten one of them. I hit enter to let the computer go and uh, the computer got a miss. Uh, the computer chose G10 and there was no ship there. So now it's my turn. And uh, my turn again, I'll go, uh, you know, I, I3. And, um, oops, sorry, I did that all on one thing here. I see, let's go three. <laughs> I guess um, it even, uh, even though I put in I3 on all one line, it still worked. It just took the letter I, ignored the three, and then I put in the column number three. And yep, sure enough, I got a hit two out of 17. So I'll hit one more time, enter, and now the computer is gone again. And uh, we can see what's going on here now. Um, so this game will continue until somebody hit, gets all 17 spots of the other person's ships sunk. And then you yell out, you hit my battleship or you sunk my battleship, right? And the game's over. Okay. I'm not going to show you all of that in the video. We're going to go now to the ship class and show you how to use this particular program. Okay. Here we are in step one of this assignment. We are looking at... Uh, the ship class. We see over on the left hand side there are actually two classes provided, ship tester and ship. The ship tester is not required. You can put code here to test the creation of a new ship uh, if you want, and I'll show you how to do that, but it's not required as part of the assignment when you submit it. But let's go to the ship class here and we can see it's just going to be an empty class and we need to complete it. Um, let's look at the exercise. All right, when you first uh, open up each step, you're gonna see a document like this. It's gonna give you instructions on how to proceed. You need to read them very carefully. As it states here, uh, the ship class represents a, a ship. Um, and we know when we think of a ship in the battleship game, we know that we would define it, its instance variables, by understanding where its position is, its X and Y, which would be its row location and column location and its length and its direction, whether it's horizontal or vertical. And so they actually suggest to you here some names that you'll want to use for your instance variable names, row, call, length, and direction, as well as some constants, okay? Because they're, they're, they like to use constants in here a lot, so you're gonna find almost every class has a few constant variables. We know those are variables that can't be changed. So what I recommend that you do here is just copy uh, some of this code here and um, bring it in and place it in your code. Now, we know uh, we need to edit this a bit. Uh, we would probably make these uh, private. And we would know that it's probably going to be a, a number, an integer. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to move ahead and show you how this looks when you get done. Now, when you get done setting up these instance variables, um, you're going to see that they've all been declared as ints. Now, it makes sense for row, column, and length to be ints, but why is direction an int? Let's go back and look at that exercise again. It states here uh, for the constants that we see that they've given that they actually have defined the constants as negative 1 is an unset direction um, or an unset value. Horizontal is 0 and vertical is 1. And so you're, you're going to have to kind of look for clues like that um, as to what kind of data type or um, exactly how they've set the game up, right? And um, you will find clues throughout, uh, but they're not super obvious at first. So let's copy this. You can highlight your code and hit tab to end it. All right, so we've gotten that started. Let's go again back to the exercise. And we'll see here in the exercise that they've given you uh, a bunch of method headers. They've given you the constructor and a bunch of other me method headers. So it is required as you do this assignment, you have to use the methods they give you. You can't write your own, okay? And I, I understand that's constrictive a little bit, um, but these assignments are auto-graded and the, this whole, all these classes are written in a certain way. And uh, it's up to you to s look at what you're given and then figure out how you would use that to complete the assignment. Very similar similar to what you were doing in the AP exam, okay, where you were given certain methods and all and you had to figure out how to use them together. So I'm gonna copy this and bring it in. 
Okay, we have our entire class now set up according to the instructions. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and look through this and think um, about uh, how I would proceed just with what I know about Java. Uh, the very first here on line 13, uh, 13, 14 is the constructor. Now you'll notice that these are all kind of defined as interfaces. Uh, you, you're given the method header, but there's no implementation of it, right? And so obviously you're going to have to uh, put in uh, your curly braces and go ahead and implement this. We know a constructor, the job of a constructor is always to set up the instance variables, right? And we're provided an argument of length. And so it would make sense that like, you know, this dot length would get the value of the parameter being passed in length. Um, now we, we should also set up these other parameters as well. So we might think, well, this dot row, uh, what would that be? Well, we're not given a parameter for that. So what would I do? Um, you know, I might just say, well, I'll put in zero to start with, right? And I'm going to show you in a bit how, what result that would give you. But we just um, want to get started here. Okay, so then uh, the direction, um, again, when a ship is first created, we don't know what its direction is. Um, so we know it's an int, so maybe again I'll just put in, you know, zero. Okay, now let's go ahead, uh, we'll see the save button at the top, and we'll make sure you save regularly. And when you come over here to the right, you, um, you can run your code by clicking that run code. And when you do that, uh, as soon as you do that, you're going to see a bunch of errors, uh, the yellow lines, and you're going to see error messages over on the right. Um, really what we have here is a set of uh, getters and setters or accessors and mutators, right? And it's, don't, don't think too hard about all of this. Um, you, you don't have a grid yet. You're just simply thinking of a ship and how would you either get or set the values of the instance variables after a ship has been created, okay? Now I'm going to move forward and set some of this up and then come back and show you what this would look like once you get all of this done. Okay, now this ship class is just about done, but we get to the point where if we hit the run code here, <clears throat> we may see that we don't actually have any errors listed here in the run code window, but let's go over to the check code. It's, it's actually more helpful for you to use what's called the test cases tab. When you click on check code, you're going to see that a series of test cases have been run for this code. And they're going to give you really specific instructions about what is not quite right. For example, it states here, uh, the first error, location should not be set for a newly created ship. And so the reason be being that I went ahead and set the row in the column, as discussed earlier, I set them to zero just because I didn't know what else to do. So if I look a little closer at this, I go, oh, I see by, by this error message, I see that this should be set, should, uh, the location should not be set. So I think what I can do is just simply change this to the constant unset. And unset has a value of negative one. See, and I had set it to zero before, which really means horizontal. And so that's not gonna work, right? And um, so let's set the column also to unset. Okay. And then save that. And then click on check code again. Now I see that this message uh, is passing, it's green. And that means that when I first set up a ship, its location is, should, it should not be set. And now we see that it isn't because it's set to unset. So that gives me a clue that it also states direction should not be set for newly ship. So let's change this also to unset. Save it. Check the code. Okay. And as I do that, as I proceed through all of these messages, I'm going to see these different clues as to how these methods need to be written. Okay. Now I'm not going to go through them all, um, but I just want you to show that once you finally get done with all the test cases and you get green pass messages, you get green messages here for each one of these, then that means the, the, the class is done. Okay. And you can save it one last time click on the submit and continue button. And if you've done that, you now will be given this message basically says, ah, you finished this class. It's done. Great job. Your program works. Submit and continue. And then you'll go on to step two.
Okay, now that we've finished the ship class, let's go back and take a look at the ship tester class. Again, I said this wasn't required uh, for the assignment, but it's helpful if you want to test out the class that you created to run some test code on it, just like we've done in class. Uh, so let's uh, look closer here. Uh, to do this, you're going to do it all inside the run method, which is already provided for you. You're going to have to just create a new ship. Uh, it requires that you give it a length when you create it. And then you could simply run, for example, the two string method. Okay, when I click the green button, it's going to run the run method. And there you go. When I uh, just run the two string method of the ship class, it's going to tell me the direction and the length and uh, all of that, just like you see here. Okay, uh, I can also use the is location set, is direction set methods and just see that those both return false as required uh, when you first set up a new ship. Then you can use the set direction set location methods here to set up a new direction location um, and then you can run some other tests on the ship okay getting its column and row its direction setting those things etc and um, you're basically just running all the methods inside of a run method um, and just testing it out here okay but again this part is not required but you could just see here how it could be done all right, that's it for this introduction to Code HS and how you are to proceed solving the battleship assignment. I will allow you to work together with friends in the class. However, uh, you can't get code from outside the class. You need to be completed, completing the code uh, with, with uh, your classmates in class or working on it on your own, whichever you prefer. I can see your progress listed in the dashboard for the teacher view. Um, as soon as you hit submit and continue, uh, all of this will also be auto graded by Code HS and I'll be able to see your progress. If you have any questions or are confused, please don't hesitate to reach out to me with your questions. All right, hope you have fun with this. And again, this is our final project of the semester. I'm not giving you any new assignments and all of this is due on the last Friday of the semester. Good luck.